Hello there. Rise, man. The force will be with you. Teeny, teeny, teeny. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have a double whammy of excellent news for the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Before I dive into the news my friends please may I ask you to hit like down below, subscribe to my channel if you're new and a huge welcome if you are. And please be sure to give that notification bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time I post new content to the channel. So my dear friends, without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So we're going to start with the first piece of Kenobi news. As you guys know, recently Ray Park has been teasing on his Instagram page a potential return to Star Wars as Darth Maul. Well, it turns out that new reports are suggesting that this is now official and he has been approached by Lucasfilm a couple of months ago and will finally return to a galaxy far, far away. While it states that this could be any Star Wars project, the best bet is that he will return in Obi-Wan Kenobi. As always, my friends, take everything with a pinch of salt. It's not been 100% confirmed just yet. So let me read you from this article. Having made a surprise cameo in Solo, a Star Wars story, as an integral member of the Crimson Dawn Syndicate, it looked obvious that the plans were in place for Darth Maul to make a significant return to the franchise. Now though, the sources that told us that Hayden Christensen would return as Darth Vader in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is now stating that Darth Maul will appear in the series too. Ray Park was reportedly contacted by Disney some months ago and we can expect to see him return in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, his first live action appearance since Solo. If you're a Rebels fan or a prequels fan or both, we have so many reasons to be excited for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Like I said the other day, it's been a really tough two weeks for Star Wars. We've had so much drama going on that it's really hard to not only remain optimistic about Star Wars on the whole, but also to look forward to the projects. But we all love Star Wars and I promise you guys that better days are to come. And in a time where it seems like everyone's focusing on the drama at Lucasfilm and the whole Gina Carano situation, it can seem hard to remember that there are some really amazing projects coming our way. Now this is not the only piece of news we have because the same source has been stating that Luke Skywalker has been cast, or at least a young Luke Skywalker, around about the time 10 years after Revenge of the Sith, has been cast and will show up in the Kenobi series. This really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone because we're in the period of time where Obi-Wan Kenobi is looking out for Luke Skywalker in a very indirect way. If you remember Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru both don't really like Obi-Wan Kenobi but because he knows about the child's force powers and who his father was he is keeping an eye on him from a distance. And that will be really awesome to see and to see how they're going to bridge the gap between Revenge of the Sith and Episode 4 A New Hope. So that's the Kenobi news and there is going to be more prequel era news in a minute but first of all let's turn our attention to the Mandalorian universe. The other day Lucasfilm announced that Cara Dune would not be recast but they've gone a step further because Lucasfilm will reportedly ignore Cara Dune in the Mandalorian universe and that basically means they're not even going to address the fact that she's being killed off. I mentioned in a recent video to do with Cara Dune that what they should do is have one of the characters explain where she's gone. They don't even need to kill her off, they could say that she went back to Navarro or she's on a different planet doing a different mission for the New Republic. But it seems as though, like I said, they're not even going to address the situation. To be honest, while it seems a bit strange, if they're able to pull that off in season 3, it's like, whatever, let's move forward. My suggestion to Lucasfilm for this to work is to really change the dynamic of the show as a whole. We know that season 3 is going to be a lot darker in tone and it will focus on Mandalore and Mandalorian themes more so than season 2 which was more centred around Force sensitivity and Grogu being handed over to a Jedi. But they need to change the dynamic entirely because if they have it very similarly to season 2 it's going to feel weird without Cara Dune. So the basic principle, the basic vibe of season 3 has to differ so much to season 2 that we don't really miss her, if that makes sense. But I will say there is a caveat to this piece of news. Disney have said that they haven't ruled out the possibility of continuing the character's story in comics and books, which basically means as long as Gina Carano isn't the face of the character, Lucasfilm is absolutely fine with carrying on the story. But recasting is not an option and in the show they're going to ignore the fact that Cara Dune ever existed, basically. It's like when they stated that they're removing her from the Mandalorian visual guide. They're just backtracking and trying to erase her from the show's history. And so now, my friends, we're going to be talking about Padme because she's getting another book. Star Wars Queen's Hope, which is the name of the book, will return to the Clone Wars for Padme's point of view. 
Star Wars fans will soon be able to see the tragedy of the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith through Padme's eyes. Star Wars Queen's Hope is the third novel in E.K. Johnson's trilogy starring Padme following Queen's Peril and Queen's Shadow. Where those previous two novels explored Padme's early life and first days in the Senate, Queen's Hope covers her time secretly married to Anakin Skywalker from the end of Attack of the Clones through her death in Revenge of the Sith. When a secret mission calls Padme away from the Senate, she must call on a faithful handmaiden. So this is what the author says. I'm going to be real with you. Anakin Skywalker is a bit of a downer for me in terms of writing because everything he touches ends badly. Qui-Gon dies, his mum dies, Padme dies, the galaxy falls apart. It does not go well for people involved in Anakin Skywalker's story when he's the main character. However, he's not the main character of Queen's Hope. He's the romantic interest. He's the love interest. And because of that, I was freed up to write him a little bit more fun. I don't know why, but this last sentence really worries me. Because giving the writer freedom to basically change Anakin's character and make it more fun could really tamper with our perception of Anakin Skywalker. Now let's be real, not everyone's going to read this book and it's going to be a very minor fraction of the fan base even interested in this kind of novel. But even so, if it's canon, which it is, they really shouldn't tamper with Anakin Skywalker. I really feel bad for Anakin specifically when the prequels were coming out because there was a lot of toxicity in the fandom then just like there is now and it was directed at Anakin Skywalker. Both Jake Lloyd who played young Anakin and Hayden Christensen faced so much backlash and as a result Anakin wasn't very liked. So in light of that I really hope that this writer does the character justice. So my dear friends, that is all of the news I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you're brand new, and also be sure to check out my Patreon page, where for just 2 or $10 a month you can get exclusive access to content that's not found here on YouTube, and that includes my podcast which is called Megasodes, my Forgotten Characters series, and so much more. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.